All right, please welcome my good friend, Mr. Steve Kenny. Steve has lived in Houston your whole entire life. Went to the great Texas A&M University. Whoop. And uh, gig him. And Steve started his amazing career off as a, unbelievably, a floor salesman at Foley's Department Store. A sales manager and buyer and assistant buyer. Assi- assistant buyer? No, wait. But- is there an intro? Is there like intro like Theo Vaughn's intro in this? <laughs> yes. Is this like cool? People like it's, us? It's already happened. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, but you start off in the late. Is it cool though? Yeah, it's cool. Okay. Okay. You'll like it. It's <laughs> probably not for you. It's in the ladies' shoe department at Foley's and then moved up in his life to become now, as we refer to in the industry, a top producing real estate agent. Lord help me. Uh, for 20 years. And you're really about one of the smartest guys I know in real estate. So I was like, I got to have Steve on. One, because I have a good time with you. You're going to say something that's probably going to be offensive. And then two, maybe not. Not really offensive, but, you know, whatever. And then two, I want people to hear about the investment game in Houston because you are the OG investor in Houston. You're like, you live in Houston, breathe Houston, <laughs> and invest in Houston. You're not like these guys coming from California, bringing all their cash and not knowing what they're buying. You, the the OG investor that doesn't own a spreadsheet to his name, no. right? Everything is calculated right here. Yes. Good, bad, did I get rent? I do keep track of rent. I do tally that. So when a deal comes into your um, email box, yeah. your phone call or text or whatever, what percentage now at this point are snap calls versus... Um, like back in the day when you're like, let me run some comps and, and figure out rental prices and all that. Snap call, you mean, I just know? Yeah, so in poker, it's poker, snap call. Do you know what that is? No, I play, as you know, I play blackjack, yeah. Ryan. And Thank you. Your move is this. <laughs> but <laughs> snap call and poker is like, you see the flop yeah. or, you, all or, 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 all, or all sorry, someone, someone, 100%. Someone bets you and based on what they bet and what you have in your yep. cards, you go boom, all in. Got it. Okay, so... I can immediately tell if it's a no. I, I If it's a no, then I know it's a no. But if it's a possible yes, then I'll be like, oh, let me then run, or let me map it to see if it backs up to the railroad tracks or whatever. So pretty much instantaneously. Yeah. Which doesn't come from the new investor, which just so you know, dude, I yeah. mean, you know this, but like most people are like, have not done anything. I mean... Well, Not everybody maybe. calls and they says, I'm a real estate investor. I say, okay, great. Step right up. You and everybody else. Yes. Right. How many houses do you own? None, but I'm just getting started. That's right. I listen to a podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Here we are. So, uh, we got you into real estate investing. How'd you get started? What was your first property you bought? And then, yeah, take walk us through the step of what, what made you go into that. Obviously you were, by the way, real quick, the ladies shoe salesman thing. I mean, yeah. were you really a ladies shoe salesman? Okay. So I, I will tell you, I received 30 this was a, I, I I graduated at the at the dot com bust right right not ninety nine I was going in ninety nine two thousand every man we were toast um, I got thirty decline letters out of A and M I got one acceptance letter to go to Foley's in their buyer and training program and part of that was going into the stores six months in the office and six months in stores I got it to the stores so you were going to go to the corporate route I I was a corporate I was a corporate executive knucklehead. I mean, but, but part but, of my training saying, was you but, had to go into the stores and then my training, my six month training ended up being five years because of transfers and promotions and what have you. That was my niche because as you and I know, maybe me more than you, I like being in the trenches. I'm in the trenches in real estate, right? You dip into the trenches and then you jump out. That's true. Right? And then you call me, what should I do? <laughs> right? So, um, I live in the trenches. If I'm not in the trenches, I found that I'm not happy. So that's where I was at. Now I'm here in real estate. Um, but did you, but I'm saying is like you, did you have an, when you were graduating college, were you wanting, I mean, you weren't wanting to go to real estate, right? I, I didn't know anything about it. Right. But you wanted to, um, make all the money. You want to make all the money yeah. and you thought the corporate route was the no, way no, no. That's the only person that accepted me. This was the nineties. There was no so, influencers. There was no gig. <laughs> there was no gig job. Side hustles. It, there was no side. This didn't exist. You, you shaved your face because they wouldn't hire if you had any facial hair. I, you and I would not get a corporate job in the nineties. Right. Um, <laughs> and then you, you, then you just prayed. I've never right? seen you one time without at least some facial hair. Well, I, I had a goatee and I refused to, to, to cut it. And therefore I got 30 declination letters. I want, it was well trimmed. I'm always well groomed. Who was the, uh, of the decline letters you got? Who was the most like humbling of all of them? Like, did you get turned down by like Arby's or something like that? 
No. Uh, I was really upset when Target declined me to go to their corporate, to go to their corporate oh, in it. Minneapolis or wherever it was. Because you were doing all corporate stuff. Well, I had made it to the third round of interviews. Yep. And then they were like, no. And I'm like, what? Bro. But whatever. Carry on. All right. Real estate. So you got in, what got you in the investment game? Um, well, when I left, I had a 401k to roll over and I, and I always wanted to get into it. Um, I didn't have any money in 07, 08 when the subprime debacle happened, but I got my parents to start investing. They were retired at the time. I sold them a number of bungalows in the Heights. If you know the Heights in Houston, all the way up, nothing can stop you. At that time, we were talking about bungalows in the seventies and eighties, nineties and a hundred. You could buy a, a, you could buy a bungalow with two garage apartments for 120. That's unheard of right now. And so I made my parents. Oh, no, God. No, sorry. That's right. No, that's all right. That's no, right. That's, God. That, we, that we didn't buy no, it more. God, all right. Please, no. So, so I sold these to my parents and I made them tons and tons of money. Oh, you're not even. We barely even took a drink, Ryan. I'm sorry, dude. Short circuit the gosh. Okay, so anyway, while we wait for the janitorial staff. Okay, so I made my parents a bunch of money in the Heights, right? Yes. Chit -cha -chit -cha you were waiting for that. Yes. Uh, made them a bunch of money in the Heights. And I couldn't afford to get into the Heights. And so, Ryan, <laughs> you're kidding. not incredible. You're, you're... So I couldn't afford to get in the Heights, right? Is, right. is my mic right now? Yeah, am you're, I, am you're I good? good. Yeah. Okay, so we, we did that and I thought, where can I go? So I started to have a lot of investment experience. And so I started selling to... Uh, my friends and colleagues and what have you, um, and Inve I could investment buy, properties, all, all properties. But I feel going back to the trenches. I feel good in the trenches, and the trenches are these ugly, terrible hoarder houses, horrible, um, where they're filled with trash and junk and fleas. And I don't like fleas, but you know what I'm saying. The value is there. Did right? you recently have a flea house? I I I was I was in a house today that I kind of was like, are there fleas on me? You just feel it, right? Yeah. People have fleas in their house. I don't know. I don't know how. But anyway, call me for more details. I can sell you a house too. Uh, so where I could afford was Sunnyside, right? So I rolled over that 401k, that self-directed IRA, yeah. um, started that. I started accumulating houses in Sunnyside, um, one house for 30k, one house for 40k, one, another house for 35k. This is back when you could buy houses for 40 and 30k. Um, it started developing my portfolio that way while I was growing other people. And their portfolio as well. But what made you decide to go, I'm going to Sunnyside? That was all I could afford. Okay. But you're, but, and you were just like, okay, cool. I can, I can only afford this amount yeah. because there's a lot of investors out there going, all right, let me just pull up the deal. If I can find a $120,000 house, that's all I've got. I'm just gonna pick that one. Well, is it cause, cause in your, was your theory home prices always go up? Home prices always go up and where can you buy and where can you cash flow and where can you grow your investment? So, um, Sunnyside has been shunned for many, many years. I mean, people, people don't go there and, and, you know, third ward and, and, you know, fifth ward and all these areas were underdeveloped. And frankly, I had to grow a love of fifth ward and, and third ward and Sunnyside because that's all I could afford. Right. And so at that time, you know, I was able to, to accumulate these houses and, you know, people, they, they, some of these guys, I mean, if you're in Houston, these are, these are notoriously tough areas. There's a lot of drugs, there's a lot of crime. And, you know, I grew a pretty good affinity for the areas and I, I've never had any problems really. And the tenants are good. The tenants are loyal. They always pay. I'm a good landlord. They're good tenants. And so I started to grow that over time. And now I'm kind of like, I don't want to say the mayor of Sunnyside because I'm, I'm obviously a very small fish, but I know the streets. I know a lot of the places. I know, you know, which areas are growing faster, which areas are slow, which areas are flood zones, so on and so forth. And I've got a lot of houses down there now. So that's, I mean, that's a very, I mean, that's a very niche investment, uh, investment strategy in Houston. Not everybody's done that. What yep. would you say is like the most common investment strategy that most investors, not just the ones you've worked with, but everybody, you know, all the, all investors in Houston have used to do in Houston, residentially, single family, condos, multifamily, whatever you want to go around there, but not commercial. So you haven't introduced my drink of choice as that, that's at the end, as, as you say, but they're going to be, they're going to be asking about it. Ryan spilled it. This is Hendrix and soda, not tonic soda, and two limes. Ryan has. Do you the, want me to go bigger. ahead? I'll go, go ahead, ahead and rate it if you want me to rate it. I don't care if you rate it or not. It's my drink. 
the reason that I, I do I do like this, which I'm gonna go ahead and say this by the way, we actually recorded this a week ago. Yeah, you didn't have a chip in there. We did. We the, talked for an hour, and you had no. And the, and you the, had no chip. And the uh, the chip was in there. The card was corrupt, and it, and, and that is Lord what, what it is. But we're here. But we need an excuse to drink. This again. is actually a better time because it's more warm, and I feel like. And it's nighttime, so we're. I feel like we're, yes. we don't have to go back to work out of this. Yes, correct. Uh, but I'm gonna give you a good eight point two. Congrats. Thank you. Uh, thank you, okay. Ryan. And and for the people to, that that maybe were probably not watching. For the people that are watching, Ryan and I, Ryan's basically the love of my life. We've we've traveled <laughs> 13 times together to Vegas and Nashville and who else, who who knows where else, Dallas and and maybe California, what have you. Um, all for real we're, estate adventures. All for real estate Except, and whiskey adventures. And whiskey. And, and partying adventures. Yes, yes, right. And so Ryan and I have been drinking together for many, many years. Ryan is the love of my life. Um, so what? when people call me, they always say, oh, I'm a real estate investor. No, you're not. You watched a couple shows, you watched Flip This House, and you're like, oh, I'm a gangster now. Uh, baby, I'm a gangster too. No. Um, That's you, copyrighted. You call. I sang Good it. For it. And good. there's a you're limit, good. right? There's, a, there's like a two-second limit. Okay, six-second limit. Um, so with that being said, everybody calls, they want to make cash flow. And what I always tell people, I tell people this right up from the front. If, if you want somebody to hold your hand, I'm free. You don't even have to pay me. I'm an expert. Trust me, in real estate investment. You don't have to pay me. I'm not going to help you with spreadsheets because I don't have any. But I'm going to tell you in my mind, that's even more important. I don't even need a spreadsheet. Right. Um, is is you're not going to make cash flow in Houston. You can debate me if you want to. Maybe if there's 100 houses to, to buy and invest in, maybe three of them you'll cash flow. $200, $300. Today, not always. Today, yeah. today not always. Today. If you right. want to get into today, um, you can debate me if you want. But what I tell people is, you have a you call me you have a job right yeah i'm a analyst i'm an engineer i'm a nurse practitioner i'm a this that i'm a doctor whatever you don't need the money you go to work to make the money you what are you going to do with 100 200 a month you're going to go out to dinner at perry's steakhouse with your wife you're going to go to uh uh you know papacitos twice right you know you don't need the money what you want to do is you want to kind of try to break even and let the houses pay for themselves what you're worrying about is the long term. Why are you buying a house? F f to build wealth. You don't need $100 a month. You need you want to build wealth. So, you know, right now I've got 26 properties. My my rental account looks it's in shambles, right? With taxes and insurance and all these things. It's terrible at all times. You're always like just juggling to let all the houses pay for themselves. The deal is is that the appreciation from what I bought is so much greater than what you bought for stop thinking small stop thinking and there's other real estate experts that might debate me right if you're getting commercial if you're getting development all these things fine i'm talking to the individual investor don't worry about cash flow worry about appreciation and know what you're buying and then in 20 years your 300 is now 900 or your 500 is now 3 million based upon your risk tolerance right i've got a lot of people with a lot of different risk tolerance I'm not going to put everybody in the same thing or attempt to. It's what's your goal? What do you want to do? And if you let me help you, psh, let's go. But it's it, but it's, it's acquisition. It's just gaining as many, gaining as many properties you can. Because, yeah. I mean, the ideal is that, like, hey, you buy a property at, like you were buying yeah. at 100 k and, yeah. and what are you typically doing notes like 20 year, 15 years, something like that? Well, I, I, I see I've exhausted all my cash, right? I've right. moved cash. I've done all this stuff. I will I will take a note. I'll take a note at ten percent. I don't care. People want to worry about cost. People want to worry about small. Oh, what's a? Oh man, that's so expensive. Uh, at the back in the day, seven percent, eight percent. Oh my gosh, that's so expensive. Now that's a normal rate. I mean, it's six and a half, seven percent. Oh my gosh, eleven percent, ten percent interest. That's so expensive. Stop. Look, I want to own the house. Right. Once I own the house, I can figure out how to do it later. I might pay you 10% or 11% for you know four or six or even 12 months, and then I'll parlay into something else. So right now I've got a commercial loan with a small bank that I've developed a relationship with. I've got a packaged loan where I've got a number of houses in this right. in this deal, and you know it's at 4.95. You know, so these deal these these small banks will work with you if you're bringing them business and if you're depositing money with them. So it's. It, 
real estate is really a relationship game, just like life. The more people you know, and the more people that you trust and they trust you, uh, I think the more money for everybody. But ideally, yeah. like you buy a property at a at hundred k, and how long are you typically paying on that till it you you own it outright? Ryan, all my properties I own cash, right? Because but, I've moved them all around, but, and or but when you started, well, you did buy when I cash. start, I bought them all cash, yeah, right? Because I started with one hundred sixty nine thousand dollars from my four hundred one k rollover, right? My my pension, whatever right. I had, and what did I buy? Like five thirty thousand dollars houses, or you know, right. was whatever. And then you were able to to expand that and leverage and move and buy some and sell some and what have you. We built some and. So there are a lot of different avenues based on your risk tolerance. Um, but right now, the commercial, for instance, the commercial loan I have, whatever the bank tells me they're going to give me is essentially what I take, it, you know, unless I can work a little bit. So they gave me a 5.95 rate for a 20-year amortization. Rates went down a couple of years ago. I said, hey, I'm paying 5.95. Can you help me out? It was a handshake deal. Yeah. We'll do 4.95. These small banks are your friend. Right. So they just said, hey, 4.95, sign here, we're good. 20-year AM. So am I making any money on these properties? No. But have they all tripled in value, right. quadrupled? Yes. But that's what I'm saying is that like, you know, 10, 20 years from now, you're owning 30 properties. I own all of them, cash. And, and they're all, not only are they yep. not worth 100000 what you originally yep. bought for them, now they're worth three, four $400,000. Yep. And now you're... Geesh, what is that? You're like twelve million dollars in, in, in you know, so so we we've gone from hundreds to millions. Right. You know, it's gonna it's gonna be hard for, for me and my longevity to go into eight figures, right? right? For sure. You wanna move and you're tired. We're right. we're tired right. already, right? Um it's just what do you need to then ride off into the sunset or be comfortable and, and carry on? Uh the 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 what do you, the inhibition or whatever that people have is they just, they have, they're paralyzed to take the first step. Yeah. Once you take the first step, it's, it, you got to have caution because then you get snake bit. Then you want to buy everything. You have, you know, one of my buddies calls it happy years. Anybody right. that says anything is happy years. You want to buy it. That's when I come in and said, no, you're not buying that. Right. Right. So I got to encourage you to take the first step and then I stop you right. after that. Carry on. What do you, what is the best first step location, price, setup? Cap rate, all that stuff. What is that? I mean, what do you think it is right now in Houston right. for someone? Is, I know it's Come hard on. for you. I know it's hard for you Come to do this, on. but there, because here's, it, it, there's, well, there's, there's a couple things. Because there, there's the 30 year old investor mm -hmm. or not, as you say, who says I'm an investor. Mm -hmm. They got some money saved up and they want to put it into real estate and they want to make, go into real estate investment. They don't want to put it in the market and, and risk that. And they're very nervous and they don't know what to do. That's who you're speaking to. Forget and, about and, it. And you got to, I want you to say it in one or two sentences. What would you tell them to do? Depends on how much cash you have. If you've got, k. if you got a hundred K, you buy two cookie cutter properties at 140 each. You lease them for 1250 and you pay the bills and you sit on them. You're not making any money. You're worried about equity. Okay. You're worried about appreciation. Okay. Do that. Set it and forget it. Got it. Okay. If you've got 350, you buy land and you build. Got it. Okay. All right. What is the... I want you, you build to... a duplex. Yes. And you lease each side. And that actually can ca cash flow. Yes. I'm cash flowing on the duplexes yeah. I'm building. All right. So uh, tell me too. Um, I, you ha dude, I mean, of anyone I know in the world besides real estate, you have the craziest stories. And I wish I could just share... I wish I could just do a whole episode on stories that i've experienced with you which is probably five percent of your entire life but most I, of it has to deal with whiskey yeah. yes but <laughs> and i've got a i've got a really loving charming personality that everybody yeah. likes yes what in real estate related yeah what you gotta pick one which story and then i'm gonna pick one if you don't tell it but which story would you say is the craziest thing that's happened to you in either real estate or investment side of it whether it was a tenant or whatever <laughs> Okay, so the the quickest story I'll say the wildest story, which which really, it was an unfortunate story for everybody. And, and there's I don't think there's, I don't know that there's any blame for anybody. If it would be, it would be the other agent. But essentially, I had a property under contract. It was an investment property. 
that my client had owned and it was, it had appreciated probably double, right? He said, well, let's get out of it. Um, it was owner occupied. So we, we have tax benefits, so on and so forth after the rental. Um, so we sold it in this area. The, it was nice. It was cool. The, uh, the, the, we had already negotiated repairs. We were through that period. We were waiting for a survey. We were waiting for appraisal. Um, the surveyors went there and they said, hey, what's the code to the gate, the back gate? I said, there's no combo. Yeah, there's a combo. I said, I don't know. And I told them the combo. They're like, no, it doesn't work. I said, ah, you're at the wrong house. You got to be at the wrong house. I said, well, go, go, through, the, go through the door. They opened the, they opened the combo in the door. It worked. It was my combo. Um, these investment properties, I use combos. I don't use a super because I got a lot of people in and out. So they walk in, there's people in there. They leave. They, I said, no, 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 there's nobody there. It's a vacant house. No, there's people there. I said, son of a gun. So they end up leaving. Um, ne- the appraiser comes over next. Same thing. I'm like, what is going on? Okay. So we, we find out, we call the police, right? The police say, no, there's people here. There's, there's somebody, we hear stuff inside. Then they leave because they're not going to enter the house without us. We don't know. So we put a, we put a scout on the house. I'm getting to the, I'm getting the end here. We, they're scouting the house, right? They leave for, for dinner break or whatever. We get a call from the neighbor. Hey, they're back. The police roll around like, like man, they're, they're guns are blazing because they're annoyed at this point because they had been there. Everybody had the appraiser, the surveyor, so on and so forth. The gosh darn buyer had the code that the agent had given to him. And all he wanted to do was go to make updates and paint and fix stuff and whatever after hours during the transaction before close. So it'd be done before close. So it had not closed yet. And he was in there. It had not closed. He's remodeled the house. Hey, we like it. It's fine. You're painting. You're doing stuff. Whatever. They arrested the buyer. I get a call from the agent. Oh, what the heck? You arrested my buyer. I'm like, bro, why is the buyer in the house mate, remodeling? <sighs> it, it, don't give the codes to the buyer. No. I, I mean, and if you're going to give the code, which don't, at least let me know before I get arrested. The buyer was so mad they got out and terminated the deal. I'm like, what? How am I supposed to? I'm trying to save your house you're buying in, in, in two weeks. <laughs> I didn't know it was you. I, had to say, I got the buyer arrested. I, I, that's a wild story. Real estate is wild because you're dealing with the consumer and the consumer doesn't know. Yes. It's our job to tell the consumer. The, the uh, other story I was going to just share because it's I was at home when this happened. I was at home watching the news and I'm yeah. watching the news and they're like, oh my gosh, this car has ran, has literally... Trifling. He was trifling. Trifling. Ran through the house, like through the house of a house up in third ward and little to come find uh, little to know, come to find out you were the owner of, that was your tenant's house. It, it was my house. Um, I, this is third party information, right? Yes. The, the, the boyfriend was cheating on the girlfriend. The girlfriend was chasing the boyfriend, whether the, whether the girl was in the car or not, I don't know. This is all third, third hand information. Please don't share this with you. Cause they don't yeah. care. They yeah. want to move on to the next deal. Right. She's chasing this dude. There's a dip in the there's a dip in the road before my house. And I guess they're driving like 80 and a 40. Yeah. Right? He makes it through. She loses control. Drives through the yard, through the house. Through the house. Grandma was on the bed here. Was this Son, was this pair and bean, by the way? Slap. Okay. Son was playing video games here. I mean, they went right in between them, right in between, through the bedrooms, through the hallway, through the entryway, through the kitchen, and the garage wall stopped them. God. Insurance paid. Can you tell me? Traumatizing. They stay? And Did they stay? Six years. Yeah, they stayed another another four years. Okay. Did it happen again? It happened again. And I, and I installed, Wait, so, um, so, it happened again. Is it something with that road? Is it like a bump or something that makes them? It's jump? that bump. And if, and I guess some people that are driving 70 or 80, uh, so what I did, and this time they went through the driveway, they crashed through their cars and they crashed into the neighbor's house. Now I installed, I installed, uh, bolsters or whatever, cedar, yeah. cedar or pine planks. Cause you thought intertwined it was happen again? with, with braided wire. Oh my Lord. So if somebody hits that thing again, they they better be 
uh, I don't want to say going faster. Please don't go. If they hit that thing again, they're going to have to pull out eight or whatever, how many are there before they hit that house. It's, it shouldn't happen again. Oh my gosh. All I right, just no, can't take it. Another question for you. Yeah. When you're invest, it seems like a lot of investors when they get in the game and you're representing them and has had, I've had this, my own clients that are investors and they're, they're like, they're like horrible negotiators. They're just like, Hey, I mean, it's already a low price. And then they're like, what, what can we get it for? Yeah. Can, can we get it low? Get, you know, and you're like, fine. I just want to make it fair. I'll make it a win-win, which that's, but I also, I think you're one of the best negotiators I know. What would you say is the key to success in negotiating, especially in investment properties? So one thing I say to my clients is knock it off. I'm not scared <laughs> to tell my client to knock it off. Right. I see you're thinking about this much of the picture, right? Worry about the, the big, whole thing. The big picture. Stop, stop losing the house over 500 bucks. Right. Stop. Just stop. I don't like nonsense. Right. Um, I want you to win and you get in the way of your own winning because you're worried about something you saw on YouTube. Forget that. Um, but the way that I negotiate effectively is I always draw the other party in as a partner. So I use the words collaboration. I use the word partner with me. Um, I, I use the sentence, let's you and I work together. Um, and as soon as you come with those terms, people let their guard down. And it's not that I'm saying that to take advantage of them. It's that in deals in business, yeah, I mean, people will dispute me on this as well. Deals in business, I think, are a collaborative effort. For sure. And if everybody doesn't act like an asshole and try to like get crazy and win and steamroll everybody, I think you benefit better. And at closing, everybody's happy. And my deals, on my deals, people are happy. Right. And and right now, nobody's happy ever. And I aim to make everybody happy. I, I you know, I aim to get a goal that where everyone's happy. All right. A couple last questions. Um, what, what advice do you have for someone who is just starting out in real estate investing? Oh, Lord. <laughs> Makes you tired thinking about it. I'm tired. I'm tired, man. Well, okay. The one thing I would say it is I get these calls from people. And they call and they want to pump me for information. And then they don't, they don't need me. Right. Um, realtors are a commodity, right? There's so many of us. What you have to do is you need someone like me or yourself um, that has been here to, to guide you. And, and, and you think you're going to get a worse deal. You think you're going to give your whatever, find the right person for you, but you do need somebody that's going to guide you because I don't care about a dollar. I don't care about making money. I don't. And what I found in life, and, and you would agree with me, the less that we care about making money, the more money we make. 100%. Yeah. I don't give a shit about money. Yeah. It, it, I care about you and winning for you. Right. And winning for everybody. But winning, just selling you a winning deal, I get so pumped when I sell the right house to the right person or I win in multiple offers if I know it's the right house for them. Um, and and in the end, I get paid and that's great. That's how I pay my bills, but I really don't care. Uh, so what I would say, if you're getting into investment in investments uh, in, in Houston or anywhere, find the greatest agent that is geared towards investment because there are tons of residential agents that that don't know or understand or care or want to do investment you've got to find the gangsters like me and you that know how to do it yeah i say gangsters i mean the guys that are in the trenches the guys that really care about in investment the guys that really know investment not just i can sell a house in a subdivision all right last question yeah which is a two-part question you gotta you gotta Make it really concise, but we're not getting the details, but I want you to tell me this. What's your worst investment and what's your best investment? What you buy it for, what you sell it for, what you make? Or what you lose on your worst? Ryan, that's not a real question. Why is that not a real question? I make money on all my investments. Okay, so then, fine. What's I've, your... I've never lost money on investments. All right, so what's the le- the least you made on it or whatever? Just, but just what you buy it for, what you sell it for, or what you, you know, whatever. Ryan, I still own all my stuff. 
and it's it's there's fine. some stuff you sold off though I, I sold one property to venture into another business right i still doubled my money on the real estate deal went to the other a total other industry right and it didn't work out and i didn't make any money right so that was your but, worst that's my worst but i didn't lose it from real estate i still doubled in real estate so the deal in real estate is longevity yeah and just buy and stop, set it and forget it, right? What well, Ronco, remember what, what, what he, he was cooking that chicken, set it and forget it, he said. That's right. Just set it and forget it. All right. Last thing I do on my show yeah. is rapid fire. Come on, Ryan. And you have Good to ask night. You have to, I know, that's not your favorite. You have to give one word answers to this. Yeah. Uh, who do you text the most? You and my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, and I, oh, Ryan and I are in love. <laughs> All these years, Ryan, Ryan, Ryan talked to Ryan ten times a day. What is your favorite word in another language? Donde? Yeah, you do. You say that a lot. Donde? Uh, Where are you? What's your favorite type of weather? I love cold, cloudy weather, or even if it's not cold, if it's very, very overcast and super dismal. But that also means that a lot of my appointments are going to cancel so I can stay at home because I work from home and I'm going to drink black coffee all day long. And after 3.30 p.m., it's going to switch to whiskey. Sorry, that's more than one word, but I yes. had to give I just I knew it scene. wasn't gonna, uh, Describe your style in one word. <sighs> my clothing style, everybody says I'm metro or I'm... I'm, I'm one word, please. Yeah, okay. What? <laughs> straight... Uh, uh, Ryan, my 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 mental style or my clothing style, your style, your general uh, style. Let's just say metro. Okay. <laughs> um, anything you're afraid of as a kid? I don't know. No, no, I don't think so. I don't know. Um, what's your favorite genre of music? Nineties alternative rock and Morgan Wallen. F favorite favorite breakfast? Uh, cheeseburgers. Favorite dinner? Cheeseburgers. Who's your favorite Disney character? I don't do Disney. <laughs> what is your favorite way to work out? Currently, I know what it is. I'm on an 80 day streak on Peloton. Um, that's all I can say. That's, I'm impressed with that. That's really impressive. All right. Last question I ask this to every single person. You have 24 hours. Yeah. All right. Money is no object. You can buy whatever you want to buy. Although it goes away at the end of the deal. Time is no object. You can travel to anywhere you want to travel. Where would you go? What would you do? Who would you do it with? Didn't you ask me this last time? I, I didn't did. know. I did. No, you did. You told what me. What did I say? I said I, I would probably, my wife hates it, but I would be partying in Broadway in Nashville, like yes. just like yes. straight up party. Morgan Wallen would you, be there. And you would have hired Morgan Wallen. Uh, yeah, Morgan would be there. Morgan. With you. I, I've been with you since before, but uh, I, Morgan Wall would be there. We would be at uh, the, we'd be at what, what the, the stage, and they wouldn't kick me out. And you'd be there, and Jen would be there. Man, it would be it would be a party like my fortieth birthday can party Lowe come was. Along? Lowe can come. All right, cool. Let's do this. All right, man. Hey, by the way, thanks for coming. Steve is also Steve and I are in this part of this little group we call the members only, which is. Uh, a few. What do we, we call it OG Taters now. Oh, yeah, OG Taters, because we're all like into whiskey. Uh, Craig Fordson, who, if you need a CPA, he probably doesn't want you to call him unless. Oh, uh, unless don't call him <laughs> unless you've got like at least 20 million. Yes. Uh, Carrie, if you need ranch real Kate estate. Fletch. And Joe Cavanaugh, who. He it, definitely doesn't want you to call no, him. No, he does not want you to call him, but the, we, we, <laughs> we, we talk to each other every day. Steve, great for being here, dude. He's awesome. Steve, uh, if people want to follow you on social, YouTube, whatever, where they find you at. At. The Kenny group, K-I-N-N-E -N -E group. And and remember, I went viral on TikTok you last did. 2.6 million. With the Amazon door. 2.6 million now. That's Whoa. That's awesome. That's crazy. Uh, so the, the at the Kenny group on Instagram and then. The Kenny group, the Kenny group. YouTube, you just you Google the oh, Kenny group, you'll find it. OG Kenny on TikTok. OG K-I-N-N-E -N -E on TikTok. Let's do this. All right, guys. Thank you all for joining. We'll see you next time.